When we reflect on the long and difficult movement for animal rights, we immediately applaud Tom, who has been at the forefront and a moving force against injustice towards animals. Our common interest in animal rights developed into a 30-year friendship, which many people would be surprised to know includes poker. It's a good thing that Tom is a world-renowned philosopher and author because he is a terrible poker player. But that's according to Mike. Our love to Tom and Nancy from Mike and Margaret Deesman. Lisa Kemmerer, as read by Emily Laverie Skull. The Culture and Animal Foundation supported my doctoral work at Glasgow University in Scotland, during which time I researched and wrote a very fat philosophy book titled In Search of Consistency, Ethics and Animals. In the process of researching and writing, I came to understand the importance of Tom's work, which figured heavily in this first book. The case for animal rights is well-developed and well-written and groundbreaking, a book any scholar would be proud to write. Thank you, Tom for your philosophical writing, and thank you to Tom, Nancy, and Culture and Animals Foundation for supporting my studies. As I prepared to graduate, a completely unknown young scholar with a focus in animal ethics, Tom and Nancy, out of the goodness of their hearts, planned a vacation to Scotland so that Tom could sit for my defense. What an amazing moment for a young scholar, and one that I'll never forget. During my defense, Tom asked a question about metaethics, exploring the very foundation of ethics. I did not know how to answer and admitted that I had no answer. Later I learned that Tom was checking to see if I had humility, the ability to admit those things that I do not know. I now understand how important humility is for any scholar and just how difficult it can be to find humble scholars. Working in a new and much reviled area, Tom had more than his share of humility along the way. Thank you, Tom and Nancy, for coming to Scotland for my defense. It is a moment in my life that I will always treasure. With doctorate in hand, I started teaching, and one of my staple courses is Introduction to Ethics, a class where I always include readings in animal ethics. Empty Cages remains my book of choice, as it has been for years. Not long after, I published Animals and World Religions and was invited to speak at the annual CAF conference. It was my first invited talk, and I was so proud that Tom found me worthy of such an honor. Thank you, Tom, for your abundant and thorough research and writing. Thank you, Tom and Nancy, for the Culture and Animals Foundation, for the many conferences you have hosted, for the many scholars and artists you have assisted, and for great honor of being in Scotland for my defense. I now have nine books published and speak at conferences in cities around the world. You were very important to what I have become. I continue to teach animal rights as pioneered by Tom Reagan. It is a great joy to share your work and something I will be doing as long as I teach and write. I am passing your philosophy of animal rights to my students and to activists around the world. Thank you. I send you all my love and well wishes and look forward to when we meet again. My name is Dale Jamison. I'm professor of environmental studies and philosophy at New York University and it is a great honor to contribute to this archive of reminiscences of Tom and Nancy Reagan. I first met Tom in 1975 when I got my first job teaching philosophy at North Carolina State University. I was a philosopher who had broad interests in ethics and political philosophy, but my training was primarily in philosophy of language and various issues in contemporary analytic philosophy. I was already a vegetarian, not through any great moral character on my part, uh, but just because of the happenstance of life in California in the 60s and rural North Carolina in the early 1970s. Tom had just written his first paper on vegetarianism, a paper that was published in the Canadian Journal of Philosophy that was called A Moral Basis for Vegetarianism. I thought this was crazy, even though I was already vegetarian. The idea that there could be a moral basis for this view struck me as, as mad. It didn't really um, comport with my picture of what philosophy was about. But I was very, very moved by the paper, convinced by it in many ways. 
And that paper and the three years that I spent at North Carolina State really set me off on a course of refocusing my work on moral philosophy and eventually environmental philosophy and really just opened doors to thinking that philosophy could address all kinds of, of different questions that center on what it is to live a meaningful life. And during those years, and these were also in the years later when Tom was writing a moral, writing the book on the case for animal rights, uh, we spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours talking philosophy. Um, in fact, there were quite a few nights when I would be at Tom and Nancy's house and we would talk and talk and talk and I would just basically pass out on the couch in their living room, wake up the next morning and go home. One particularly memorable time is when we had been at a conference at Blacksburg, Virginia, uh, which was the first time actually that I also remember spending a lot of time with Peter Singer. And Tom and I had driven up with Don Vandeveer, another philosopher at North Carolina State at that time. And Don was driving, and I remember poor Don going almost completely mad because Tom and I were just talking philosophy all the way back from Blacksburg, Virginia, back to Raleigh, North Carolina. So those years were extremely formative for me in just what it is to be a philosopher, what it is to do philosophy, and what philosophy has to say about our relationship with non-human animals. And as so often, as the years passed, I spent less time with Tom and Nancy, but continued to admire from afar that the work, the work that they were doing with the Culture and Animals Foundation. And this, like so much of Tom's work, is a real legacy that will outlive all of us.